In 2004, scientists with NASA's Space Space Galaxy Evolution Explorer GALEX spotted an object unlike any they had seen before in our Milky Way galaxy, a large, faint blob of gas with a star at its center. Though it doesn't actually emit light visible to the human eye, GALEX captured the blob in ultraviolet UV light and thus appeared blue in the images. Subsequent observations also revealed a thick ring structure within it. So the team nicknamed it the Blue Ring Nebula. Over the next 16 years, they studied it with multiple Earth and space-based telescopes, including WM Keck Observatory on Mauna Kea in Hawaii, but the more they learned, the more mysterious it seemed. A new study published online on November 18 in the journal Nature may have cracked the case. By applying cutting-edge theoretical models to the slew of data that has been collected on this object, the authors posit the nebula, a cloud of gas in space, is likely composed of debris from two stars that collided and merged into a single star. While merged star systems are thought to be fairly common, they are nearly impossible to study immediately after they form because they're obscured by debris kicked up by the collision. Once the debris has cleared, at least hundreds of thousands of years later, they're challenging to identify because they resemble non-merged stars. The Blue Ring Nebula appears to be the missing link. Astronomers are seeing the star system only a few thousand years after the merger, when evidence of the union is still plentiful. It appears to be the first known example of a merged star system at this stage. Operated between 2003 and 2013 and managed by NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California, GALEX was designed to help study the history of star formation by observing young star populations in UV light. Most objects seen by GALEX radiated both near UV represented as yellow in GALEX images and far UV represented as blue, but the Blue Ring Nebula stood out because it emitted only far UV light. The object's size was similar to that of a supernova remnant, which forms when a massive star runs out of fuel and explodes, or a planetary nebula, the puffed-up remains of a star the size of our Sun. But the Blue Ring Nebula had a living star at its center. Furthermore, supernova remnants and planetary nebulas radiate in multiple light wavelengths outside the UV range, whereas the Blue Ring Nebula did not. Phantom Planet in 2006, the GALEX team looked at the nebula with the 5.1 meter Hale telescope at the Palomar Observatory in San Diego County, California, and then with the even more powerful 10 meter Keck Observatory telescopes. They found evidence of a shockwave in the nebula using Keck Observatory's low resolution imaging spectrometer, LRIS, suggesting the gas composing the Blue Ring Nebula had indeed been expelled by some kind of violent event around the central star. Keck's LRIS spectra of the shock front was invaluable for nailing down how the Blue Ring Nebula came to be, said Kerry Hoadley, an astrophysicist at Caltech and lead author of the study. Its velocity was moving too fast for a typical planetary nebula yet too slow to be a supernova. This unusual, in-between speed gave us a strong clue that something else must have happened to create the nebula. Data from Keck Observatory's high-resolution Eschel spectrometer also suggested the star was pulling a large amount of material onto its surface. But where was the material coming from? The Hyers observations at Keck gave us the first evidence that the system was accreting material, said co-author Mark Seibert, an astrophysicist with the Carnegie Institution for Science and a member of the GALEX team at Caltech, which manages JPL. For quite a long time we thought that maybe there was a planet several times the mass of Jupiter being torn apart by the star, and that was throwing all that gas out of the system. 
Though the Hires data appeared to support this theory, it also told us to be wary of that interpretation, suggesting the accretion may have something to do with motions in the atmosphere of the central star. To gather more data, in 2012, the GALEX team used NASA's Wide Field Infrared Survey EXPLO. Archival data from three other infrared observatories also spotted the disk. The finding DIDNT rule out the possibility that a planet was also orbiting the star, but eventually the team would show that the disk and the material expelled into space came from something larger than even a giant planet. Then in 2017, the Hobby Eberly Telescope in Texas confirmed there was no compact object orbiting the star. More than a decade after discovering the Blue Ring Nebula, the team had gathered data on the system from four space telescopes, four ground-based telescopes, historical observations of the star going back to 1895 in order to look for changes in its brightness over time, and the help of Citizen S. But an explanation for what had created the nebula still eluded them. Stellar sleuthing When Hoadley began working with the GALEX science team in 2017, the group had kind of hit a wall with the Blue Ring Nebula, she said. But Hoadley was fascinated by the thus far unexplainable object and its bizarre features, so she accepted the challenge of trying to solve the mystery. It seemed likely that the solution would not come from more observations of the system, but from cutting-edge theories that could make sense of the existing data. So Chris Martin, principal investigator for GALEX at Caltech, reached out to Brian Metzger of Columbia University for help. As a theoretical astrophysicist, Metzger makes mathematical and computational models of cosmic phenomena, which can be used to predict how those phenomena will look and behave. Please support my channel to grow by pressing subscribe button and the bell icon, we will notify you technological news. Thank you.